So now in this video, we're going to go over how to read a paper. That was a, a comment a bunch of students had asked. They wanted a good, organized way of how to do it. And the way I used to do it was I would start at the beginning, and then I would just flip through to the next page, to the next page, to the next page, till I got to the end. And you know, by the time I got halfway through, I was so mentally exhausted, I had no idea what I was reading. So obviously, since I'm making a video about this, there's got to be a different way, a better way. And of course there is. So, uh, in short, what you're going to do is you're going to first read the abstract, and then the next thing that I do is I read every single table and try to make sense of what it's saying. And then, go back and read the methods and the results. This will make a lot more sense now that you uh, have looked at and understood the tables, because the, especially the results, they basically are explaining what they found, and it's really hard to read a description of numbers, unless you kind of know what the numbers already say. And now that you've read the method and results, and you can decide what conclusions you would draw from this. And then after that, you can read what they, what conclusions they drew by reading their results and their discussion section. So let's go through this process together, and we're going to use this paper. Yes, it's an old one. It's from 1981. But it's one that is commonly taught in EBM courses, as you'll see why. And it's the, the title of it is Coffee and Cancer of the Pancreas. I know, what a nightmare that would be if coffee caused cancer of the pancreas, because coffee is so delicious, and the cancer of the pancreas is so terrible. But let's read on. So let's start with the abstract. Okay, and the abstract says they question 369 patients with histologically proven cancer of the pancreas and 644 control patients about their use of tobacco, alcohol, tea, and coffee. So if you couldn't tell before, I'm a very visual person, so I like to draw out what's going on. So we had 369 patients with pancreatic cancer and 644 who didn't have any cancer. Now they asked both groups uh, about the use of cigarettes, alcohol, coffee, and tea. So you may immediately recognize that this is a case control study design. Those who have the pancreatic, pancreatic cancer are the cases, and those who don't are the controls. All right, so now let's get back to the paper. So they say there was a weak positive association between pancreatic cancer and cigarette smoking, but they found no association with cigars, none with pipe tobacco, none with alcohol, or none with tea. However, they did find a strong association between coffee consumption and pancreatic cancer in both sexes. The association was not affected by controlling for cigarette use. Now you'd want to control, right? Because people, at least maybe in the 80s, when they drank their coffee, they often smoked cigarettes too. So you want to control for the cigarettes so, you, so that you can't blame the cancer on the cigarettes instead of the coffee. For the sexes combined, there was significant dose-response relation after adjustment for cigarette smoking. And so that means the more coffee you drank, the more um, cancer you're going to more likely you're going to have to have cancer. The relative risk associated with the drinking up to two cups of coffee per day was 1.8 uh, with, uh, with a confidence interval of 1 to 3.0. Okay, now we already know that a confidence interval that includes 1 is not statistically significant if we're looking at uh, risk ratios. But, uh, and that with three or more cups of coffee, it was 2.7. The association should be evaluated with other data. It reflects a causal relationship between coffee and drinking and pancreatic cancer. Uh, I don't know that it does, but okay. Coffee use might account for a substantial proportion of the cases of this disease in the United States. So in fact, I believe these authors, who are GI doctors, uh, had everybody in their clinic stop drinking coffee and, and only drink tea. So let's think about what they were saying again. They're saying that uh, of, of the people who had pancreatic cancer, more of them drank coffee than the ones who didn't have pancreatic cancer. And they're calling that a, a causal relationship, meaning that coffee causes pancreatic cancer. Your EBM uh, spidey sense should be tingling now because you would say, this is a case control study. We don't make causal relationships from a case control study. We talk about associations, correlations, but not ca cause and effect. Okay, we read the abstract. Step two, let's go look at the tables. And so here we are at table one. Now table one in most papers is going to give you the demographics of each group. 
of the cases in the controls, how many men there were, how many uh, people had comorbidities, uh, whatever in information that might be of relevance. In this case, it's a little bit different. And we're looking at the distribution of cases and controls according to cigarette smoking habits and estimates of risk ratios. Okay, and so we got, they split them up by men and women, and the cases, that means the people who have pancreatic cancer, and the controls, those who have no pancreatic cancer in both men and women. All right, and so, and then across the top we have those who never smoked, those who were ex-smokers, those who smoke less than a pack a day, and more than a pack a day. All right, and then they can compare the two groups, and they calculated the relative risk ratios, and you can see these are here. So with smokers, you could see uh, the ones, the uh, denominator is going to be the never smoked group, so that's why there's no, uh, this, this will always be one here, because you're comparing it to itself. And then we would be comparing ex-smokers to the never smokers and current smokers to the never smokers. All right. And so the risk ratio for the people who are ex-smokers is 1.4. However, the confidence interval here you see includes 1. Right. So this is not statistically significant. So whatever. We don't care about that. This one's 1.1. Confidence interval again includes 1. We don't care about that. 1.4. This confidence interval includes 1. 1.4. Confidence interval includes one. We don't care about that. What about with women? Do we have anything else? Look, this this one includes one, this one includes one, this one includes one, this one includes one. And so we can't say that we found some any statistically significant uh, association between uh, cigarette use and uh, pancreatic cancer, according to this table. That's how I would uh, interpret it. Now let's go down to table two. And this asks a very similar thing, except now we're looking at alcohol drinking habits okay and again we got our men and our women our cases and controls and we got those who never drank occasional drinkers and regular drinkers okay and so we do the same thing again right this is going to be our referent group here the ones who never drank those are the ones that we're going to compare everyone else to those are the denominator so the occasional drinkers 1.3 but confidence interval here it includes one so we don't care about that this includes one, that includes one. So we don't really find here any association that is statistically significant between alcohol use and pancreatic cancer. All right, let's go to the next table. All right, so this one here is looking at uh, tea drinking habits, okay, and the risk ratios. And so same thing, cases and control, men and women. And then we got people who drink zero, one to two, and greater than three cups of tea a day. Okay, this is our referent group. This is the one that we're comparing them to. And again, let's look at our confidence intervals here. And these all include one. But if you, you know, sometimes people will say, hey, but it's trending towards better. So it looks like 0 0.7, you're less likely to have pancreatic cancer than if you didn't, if you drank tea, then didn't drink tea. But it's not stati statistically significant. You say, well, it's trending towards that. But I don't think you can really say that. So nothing there and how about with the women same thing so we can't really find an association here between tea drinking and pancreatic cancer okay now we're gonna look at coffee drinking right and it's the same thing again cases controls men women this is our referent group the one who doesn't drink any coffee and then the across the top we have one to two two to three to four and greater than five cups a day all right again now we look at our numbers here these are bigger numbers than we've seen before here and our confidence, hey, this confidence interval does not include one. So this might be uh, uh, something of significance. And then this one also, it, it hits one, so I'm not going to count that one. And what about this one? This one also doesn't include one. And if you take them all together, look, this confidence interval does not include one. And let's look for the women. This one, uh, confidence interval includes one, don't care. Ooh, this one doesn't. And this one doesn't. And this one doesn't. All right, so now we're starting to see something here. The more coffee you drink, the more likely you are to have pancreatic cancer. And so that's what they said. But you know what? Remember they said that oftentimes you smoke while you drink your coffee, so maybe we need to adjust for that. So now we move to this table over here, and this looks at the relative risk of cancer of the pancreas associated with the use of coffee and cigarettes. And so this table is a little bit different than the ones that we were looking at along this side we have our cigarette smoking, right? So we have our never smokers, ex-smokers, and current smokers. Then on this side, we have our coffee drinkers, and we have our uh, 
zero cup, one to two cup, and greater than three cup drinkers. And so our referent group is, of course, going to be the one who doesn't do anything, and that's this. And so that's who we're going to compare everyone else to. And so let's look at our people who never, who don't smoke uh, and drink coffee, and look, they have uh, risk ratios that are pretty high, right? Um, now, they don't give us confidence intervals for these, but they do for the totals. So for the ones who, this is going to be our referent group, if we compare across this row here, uh, is going to be uh, this one here, right? And so, then for the never smokers, for the ones who are ex-smokers, regardless you know, of how much coffee they drink, doesn't make a difference, right, because our confidence interval includes one. And for the current smokers, regardless of the coffee they drink, Again, it doesn't make a difference because our confidence interval here includes one. Now let's look uh, at our um, coffee drinking, okay? And so here we got the, this is our, again, our referent group. This is the people who drink one to two cups of coffee a day, and regardless of how much they smoke, uh, the confidence interval includes one, so we don't care about this one. But here we do, look at that, this confidence interval does not include one. And so regardless of how much, whether you smoke or not, if you drink three or more cups of coffee a day, you got an increased risk of pancreatic cancer. Okay, so we're halfway through what we need to do and near the end of this video. But what we've learned so far is that this is a case control trial, and we found that there's a strong association with coffee consumption, and even if you, if you include the cigarettes in it, it still stays there, but not for tea or alcoholic, beverage, alcoholic beverages. So now let's go through the rest of the paper in the next video.